All right, here we go. Uh, what I say? Luke chapter number 19. So again, Palm Sunday is uh, considered uh, the, the Sunday, the, the preeminent Sunday, the Sunday that precedes certainly Resurrection Sunday. And uh, it is often the case that Palm Sunday uh, is uh, also doubling for some as Passion Sunday. Uh, the Sunday that uh, allows us to reflect very deeply about uh, this idea that in order for us to get to resurrection, you got to go through a few stages that may sometimes uh, be some highs and some lows. <laughs> that although uh, many of us are always trying to accelerate the radical transformation um, uh, end result, there's often a lot of work that God is trying to do in the meantime. Uh, I remember my brother, he wrote a, a, a book or he preached a sermon and he called it uh, In Between. What do you do when you're living during the in between? Uh, the, the in between of God's uh, fulfillment of God's promise and, and the reality that, man, God, you sure enough taking your, so, your sweet time. You ever, ever told God that before? God, you, you taking too long. Why don't you just come on and do what you're supposed to do? <laughs> Get this thing over with. I'm, I'm just ready for the next phase. Anybody ever told God you're ready for the next phase? I'm ready for the next phase. I've been in this storm too long. And uh, I do believe that one of the gifts of the liturgical calendar, Lent and Easter and Pentecost and uh, Christmas and all of these <clears throat> seasonal liturgical uh, worship high points and sometimes low points that remind us that there are always seasons that God is taking us through. And one of the great things about a season is that a season does not last always. But you can always anticipate that a change is going to come. And so part of what I hope for us to speak a little bit about today is what does it mean for you and I to create recognition? How do we recognize what God is doing while we're living in the in-between? Luke chapter number 19 on this Palm Sunday gives you and I, I think, some great material to work with and reflect upon. Verse number 37 of Luke chapter number 19 should be on the screen. Jesus has just for reference sake invited his disciples to go and find a colt, to go and find a donkey, a, a mode of transportation because Jesus is making his final trip into Jerusalem before he is to be handed over to his enemies, before he's be handed over to the full weight of the state, of the empire, the death dealing, the executing the life-taking empire. Jesus is setting his face in one of the other lectionary passages like a flint, the scripture says, meaning that Jesus has made up his mind that he is going to a certain death. And so Jesus is preparing himself uh, for this entry into literally one of the most painful and difficult seasons of his personal life and ministry and uh, I find it then to be fascinating as we pick up the things that Jesus is preoccupied with in these particular passages. Verse 37, when Jesus came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. They were saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But some of the haters, I mean the Pharisees in the crowd, said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. Jesus replied, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Hmm. Verse number 41, as Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace. But now it is hidden from your eyes, and the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another. 
because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Oh, the word of God for us, the people of God, let us say thanks be to God. So we're going to talk from the topic again, creating recognition. Father, in the name of the Lord, I want to invite your presence in this place. Bless the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide your word in our heart so we will not sin against you. And please send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Let it rest upon me and even the hearers of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Uh, somebody say you better recognize. Amen. You better recognize. Amen. T -t tell the person uh, behind you, tell him you better recognize. You better recognize. I hope the back of that head was real uh, communicative with you. Praise God. <laughs> this week I, I had the opportunity, many of you know, the, last week we had our gun violence prevention Sabbath, and I want to appreciate all of us and all of you who participated. Uh, it was quite a powerful expression of our witness, and not only our congregation, but there were many, many other congregations across the country that leaned into the issue of gun violence. And I don't know if uh, it is lost upon you that uh, yesterday's uh, massive demonstration of young people speaking out and lending their voices and offering all kinds of compelling uh, uh, um, speeches and reflections on uh, why it's so important for our country to wrestle and uh, eventually shift this kind of culture of death through guns that has literally gripped uh, many, many of our communities and certainly the national imagination of many uh, victims, survivors, et cetera. I, I find it to continue to be an amazing and important opportunity for you and I to appreciate, as we often say, that there is often a challenge that we have where we can't recognize every voice that speaks or is speaking equally. Uh, in, in, our, in our Washington Post uh, uh, op-ed that we uh, were able to participate in, we certainly were trying to drive this point home that we are trained to hear voices a certain way. Uh, often, if you are uh, someone without affluence or without significance, uh, your voice is, is, is received very differently in the larger society, certainly uh, even in our own communities. If you are someone who has an outsized platform, if you are wealthy, if you are a celebrity, if you are someone that has reached a certain kind of, 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 of social status, uh, people can say things even if it's ridiculous, and our ears were perked up in a totally different kind of way. I don't know if you've ever been in a meeting, amen, uh, with some folks, and you say one thing, and nobody responds, and then someone else says the same thing, you know, uh, maybe a gender difference, maybe a melanin difference, and maybe... <laughs> Uh, uh, a class difference, it may be a, a title difference, but you're just like, what? <laughs> Anybody ever had that? It's like, I, I, just, I just said that. And, and when you said it, it just like fell to the ground like a 100 pound uh, barbell, just boom, hit the ground. Silence. And someone else says it in the whole, huh, the skies open up. And, <laughs> And oh, that's the greatest idea I've ever heard. What must we do to be saved? And you're just like, listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> and, and it is indeed the case that we are a country and certainly we are a people who are trained not to hear all of these voices equally. And so as we are entering into Holy Week and Jesus is marching and triumphantly entering into his next season of life, I think it's worthy of you and I to just pause and challenge ourselves to make sure that we are training our ears and our hearts to hear the voices of suffering in ways that are uh, empathetic and certainly 
expanding our circle of concern and belonging. Um, it is not lost upon me, certainly, and hopefully on many of us that this week continues to be a week as many other weeks previous, where the lives of our loved ones are being senselessly lost to violence in many, many forms. Uh, Stefan Clark, and uh, they released a video of our dear brother in Sacramento who uh, supposedly was, was breaking some windows or breaking into cars and, and ran into the back of his grandmother's home and was shot down in a hail of 20 bullets. And uh, certainly uh, watching all of the video footage of that proved to be, again, quite problematic, traumatic, and terroristic for many of us. Um, and, and certainly we continue to find ourselves deeply challenged that the violence associated to the Stefan Clarks of the world continues to be uh, very difficult for many of us in our country and culture to hear with the same amount of embracing and championing as the voices of our young loved ones who endured the violence in a place like Parkland. And I've often said uh, in my interviews and conversations that, you know, this is not an indictment on the youth of Parkland because they're young people and they just got here. And tragedy, when it comes knocking on your door, you don't always get an opportunity to, uh, to, 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 to have the analysis that uh, we expect adults should have. And so for many of us, I want you to embrace that there is a, a certain kind of hearing that we as adults have to accelerate our learning on. Because, you know, I talk to folks very frequently nationally and, and locally and, and in the neighborhood about uh, some of the challenges we have. And it's so fascinating that if you're from a different part of town, if you're from a different part of the street, if you're from a different political party or a religious tradition or whatever kind of difference you may want to name, we can't hear each other's voice that well at all. It's almost as if we are, 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 are hearing or listening so we can convince them of our opinion. You ever been in a conversation with somebody and, 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 and they can't wait to get, get you done with what you got to say? So they could just, just jump on the last sentence. It's like, Jesus wept. Then you know what else he did. And you're like, man, I mean, can I just get, get, get my sins out? I mean, I hope you're not one of those people who, 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 who talks more than you listen, who, who are so convinced about what you think you know that you have no room in your mind or your life for information that may challenge your conventional thinking. I find it to be so important that you and I, as we enter this Holy Week, appreciate that Jesus is one of these life examples and expressions who was always pushing the boundaries of what people thought was settled. Mm-hmm. You know, and Jesus was always kind of upending the conventional wisdom of the Pharisees. That's why when in the story, as I read it, when the Pharisees saw Jesus getting all those accolades, the Pharisees was upset about it because they realized more than perhaps the people did that Jesus was making another one of these claims that would eventually threaten the status quo that the Pharisees were attempting to maintain. And be clear, child of God, loved one, skeptic, and believer, that when Jesus comes into your life, status quo goes out the window. When Jesus comes into your life, you know, Jesus, with a smile on his face, will turn your world upside down. Somebody say amen. Jesus is one, one of these kind of disruptive forces of eternity that will not leave you the same. And part of our, 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 our task then is to recognize the work 
that Jesus is always doing to fulfill and even fill the parts of your life that are in deep need of some substance. Because what is at risk when our lives are left empty is a weight that can crush us because we do not have what we need, the infrastructure to hold the complexities of our lives. And be clear, child of God, your life is quite complex. I mean, we try to, we try to flatten our lives and, and, and describe ourselves in ways that will never give a full description of who we are. But how many of you know there are some moments in your life where every description you have will not be enough? There are some moments in your life where everything you've learned will not add up to be enough. There are some events that will happen in your life where every kind of experience you've had previously will leave you wanting. And it is in those moments that I think it is critical for you and I to recognize what God is up to. As Jesus rides into the city, I'm, 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 I'm deeply moved that one of Jesus' first response is to cry. To cry at the conditions of the city he loved. To cry for the people whom he is some days later literally going to give his life for. And rather than being preoccupied with the cross, Jesus is still preoccupied with his city and his people. It is indeed, I think, paradigmatic for you and I to appreciate that our attention span for what is happening around us must continue to hold all of the pain and the challenge and the complexity that often in our practice of faith and religion, we can easily be tempted and seduced to abandon. We can easily show up to church or show up to practice our faith in ways that will cause a part of our brain to shut off and we just focus on resurrection as we should but ignore that on the road to resurrection you're going to have to weep for your city. You're going to have to weep for your family. You're going to have to carry some burdens and some concerns for the least, the lost, and the left out. And if no one else is willing to carry that burden as we enter Holy Week, Jesus is reminding you that we who follow in his footsteps have to be willing to carry an awareness and a consciousness of the people and the cities in which we are called to serve and inhabit. Now be mindful, child of God, that even though our city lives within an empire, our calling comes from the kingdom of heaven. And because our calling comes from the kingdom of heaven, you and I have to always be recalibrating ourselves to make sure we are aligning with our call from God. Even while we're suffering through the challenge of a fallen world, or a violent, deadly empire. Because there is never a moment, child of God, where your calling goes away. Mm -hmm. I, I, one of my favorite movies is The Apostle, and I remember, I, I think I've used this example before, where, you know, The Apostle, I've seen The Apostle, anyway, I've seen this movie, The Apostle is a great, great movie with uh, some old guy, I can't remember the guy, Robert Duvall, is that his name? Robert Duvall, and, and you know, he's a preacher, you know, been a preacher since he was a boy, and he, and he was just one of these on fire, but he had a terrible temper. And, and so, you know, he, 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 he found out that, you know, uh, 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 his wife was having an affair, so he went to the baseball game and, and, and confronted the guy and hit him with a bat and killed the guy. And then he went on the road, and, and he was praying in the house, uh, in, the, in the upper room. You know, his house had an upper room, and he just hollered to the Lord and just talked to the Lord. And people were calling on the phone, what's going on over there? And his mom was like, you know, he, he, he's an old guy, so his mother is even older. And she's like, oh, that's just Sonny. You know, he talks to God real loud when he gets mad. And Sonny went on the run, and every place he went, he just was going 
to start these churches. And eventually, you know, the law caught up with him as it should have, I guess, and he ended up on, on, on the chain gang line. And on the chain gang line, he's out there breaking rocks, and he has everybody saying, Jesus, Jesus. And I was just struck by this idea that even in the middle of your idiosyncrasies, God can still use you to fulfill your calling even out of your weaknesses. Your calling doesn't go away just because you have some challenges. Your calling doesn't go away just because people are evil. Your calling doesn't go away just because the empire is turning on you. As a matter of fact, it is in those moments I want to argue that the power of God's work in your life has the opportunity to shine ever so brightly if you and I can recognize that God is still at work among us. This then leads me to my first point of this idea of recognition. I, I think one of the hardest things for you and I to acknowledge and to at least realize in the face of all the difficulty that we are dealing with is that evil will not win. It's the first point. Somebody say evil will not win. Verse number 20, 30 something, what verse is that? Because I can't see what that says up there because I'm just blind. Verse 38, verse 38, it simply says, blessed is the king who is coming in the name of the Lord. This idea, amen, that Jesus on his way to Calvary is actually making an entry of a triumphant and conquering king. And the people realize that there is something different about what is happening in this moment. And I think it is a recognition and acknowledgement that evil will not win in the course of our lives. What a great message, particularly you and I who continue to struggle with the emerging and manifested evil of our day. The continuous expression of evil and prejudice and racism and addiction and bondage and hopelessness that continues to bubble up at the surface and causes you and I to ask God, where are you? It is good for you to acknowledge whether you believe it or not, while you're acknowledging it, that evil will not win. I tell you this week, in your job, at your home, uh, in your private time, you just keep reminding yourself the devil won't win. The devil won't win. The devil, he's fighting, amen, but I'm not going to just lay down and let the devil run roughshod over my life and my family and my community and my mind. The devil won't win. Now, be clear, even as you're telling yourself that, you can still ask some hard questions. Huh? And theologically, it's called theodicy. It's this idea that all of these figures in Scripture would ask, God, why do bad things happen to good people? I can recall asking God a few times, what's up with that? And, and then God just kind of pitched back a question to me. He said, so which one of you are good? Are you good, McBride? I said, well, you know, if you catch me, you know, around this time on this day. Amen. I hope I qualify as good. Amen. These other moments, amen, I'm doing the best I can. Somebody say amen. Do I have any doing the best I can kind of folks in here today? Amen. God, you know, I, I want to be good. Anybody want to be good? Amen. I I'm trying to be good. Amen. But sometimes, you know, good just kind of falls a little short. Mm-hmm. Ain't it always interesting that you can give yourself more credit and space to be good than you can your brother, your sister, your loved one? Amen. Wouldn't it be something if you gave your brother, sister, your loved one the kind of credit and space and 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 and, and, and uh, uh, intention that you gave yourself? Amen. You know, because there are only a few folk I met in my life who wake up every day to cause hell for somebody else. Most of the time, the hell that's being caused is an accident. It's like, I didn't mean to mess your life up like this, praise God. It was just an accident. Don't make it any better, but at least I know that you just like me, just kind of making some boo-boos here and there. Regardless of the boo-booing you're doing in people's lives, somebody say amen. 
the reality is still this. There are times where you know you don't deserve this bad stuff that's happening. It's like, I know I'm not, you know, I know I'm not that. And, you know, that I can think of a few people who are that. <laughs> Touch your neighbor. I'm not one of them. And so you find in Scripture this whole kind of trajectory and, and, and set of writings that are talking about theodicy, the, 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 the challenge of bad things happening to good people. You are not the first to ask that question, and you won't be the last. So keep asking the question while you keep telling yourself that the devil won't win. You ought to pat yourself on the chest and say, I know the devil won't win, won't defeat me. I know that I will not be defeated by the devil. You sometimes have to just, you know, just, just say it out loud. Devil, you're not going to win. Loose here, Satan. I'll be sitting in meetings, amen. People be looking at me like, what are you talking about? It's like, you don't understand. But, but you, you better be glad I know what's going on in this meeting. Man, you don't, you don't know the devil's busy up in his meeting. You think it's just some energy. No, that ain't no energy. That ain't nothing but the devil. Somebody say amen. And you have to continue to remind yourself. Jesus on the road to Calvary, I think, made an explicit decision to enter the city one last time as a reminder to all who would see him. That even though you may see me on a cross some days later, you can be reminded that I am the ride and die conquering king. That I may have to go through death, but when I get up out the grave, you will be able to put all of this together and point to the power of my word before the reality of the situation. And there is a, a word from God that God would speak to you and I before you get in your trouble. That God wants to then remind you of when God brings you out of your trouble. Because it is the word spoken before your trouble that will help you have faith when you get out of your trouble. Somebody shout hallelujah. It is important for you to allow this truth that the devil won't win to help you not be convinced or lulled to sleep about you and your conditions. How must you then train yourself? I love in the text, it says that they were proclaiming, blessed be the name of the Lord, the one who comes in the name of, of God, etc. And it also says that they were praising God for his great acts of power. That God will do miracles and acts of power in your life as a precursor, as a reminder that ultimately God has not abandoned you or I. You know, this week, I, I, I must admit, I was somewhat torn about all the attention being given to some of these voices that obviously uh, have much more compassion uh, 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 being sent their way and, 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 and at the same time, seeing how many of the voices of our loved ones are met with such violence and such negation and such, such problematic analysis. And then I saw how these young people were literally making room for the voices of others to sit next to their voices. How, how they were struggling to make room for an analysis that they themselves may not have been fully able to articulate. And it gave me a little bit of hope that miracles can indeed happen right in front of our eyes. It reminded me that there's something about being uh, young with an open mind that can help catalyze some of the older closed-minded folk in the room. Because a lot of folk have an agenda that is about keeping you and I out of a conversation. But how many of you know you can't keep folk out if God has already made them included? And you and I then have to look for the ways that God 
it is doing little minor miracles around you all the time. Some of us are waiting for the big stuff, and God is saying, watch how I just do some little things here and there. I'm going to plant some, some joy in this office whenever there's despair. I'm going to plant some reconciliation in this marriage whenever you thought it was beyond redemption. I'm going to place some healing in your body when you fought, thought that the doctor's diagnosis was final. I'm going to give you a little wink of justice when it feels like the empire is winning. I'm going to help you get some sleep when you can't sleep at night. I'm going to help reconcile your daughter and your, 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 your mother's relationship when you thought it was beyond the point of reconciliation. God knows how to give you a little bit of a wink of a recognition that I am still at work. The question is, can you train your ears? And your eyes and your heart to hear and see what God is doing when you've been trained to ignore it. One of the first things then I want you to appreciate as you enter Holy Week, is it hard for you to recognize that evil is not winning? How must you train your senses to see the powerful acts of God that are all around you as we remain faithful? It is true that it must be an act of intentionality to train yourself to see God where it seems God is absent. You got to train yourself. This is why I love Brother Lawrence. He's one of these mystic monks type of cats and he had this practice practicing the presence of God and he would just walk around and he would just try to see God in everything See God in the trees, see God in nature, see God in inanimate objects, see God in the air and the water, see God everywhere. Why? Because when you can train yourself to see God everywhere, then the devil will never have the ability to overwhelm your senses and make you believe God is absent. How many know you'll act differently if you think God is with you? I don't know if you ever been in a fight with somebody. I remember, you know, I had a few folks that was trying to bully me and I didn't think I had enough backup. And so, you know, when, when they weren't around, you know, it's kind of like Smokey, you know, and then when Debo came up there and he was like, you know, when, when, when Debo come around, I be quiet, but when he leave, I talk again. How many had that kind of spirit? <laughs> Y'all excuse me, I don't know. I was watching Friday this week. But, but, but how many of you ever been in a situation where you didn't think you had any backup? And so you were real silent and, and you would get real quiet. But as soon as your big brother or your comrades or your homeboys show up, oh, you turning up then. It was like, I wish you would do something. Come on, let's, let, let, let's get it on. And when ain't nobody's around, you just kind of like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a peacemaker, praise God. I'm not, I'm not trying to get into this. I want you to know that when you can train your senses that God is with you always the devil can never intimidate the child of God somebody holler I cannot be intimidated sickness may come my way but I refuse to be intimidated uh, injustice may come my way but I refuse to be intimidated haters uh, may come my way but I refuse uh, to be intimidated I may be filled uh, with despair but I refuse to be intimidated uh, because I've trained myself to see God uh, where nobody else knows he's around uh, God will be there every time lord i feel a little preach coming on give your neighbor a high five and tell him i will not be intimidated oh so sit down sit down uh, the second thing you have to appreciate is that you if you are gonna be someone cultivating the recognition of god listen you have to learn from the stones no matter how to learn from the stones now, it's so interesting how these stones are being referred to in this passage because you have people who are trying to silence the voices of those who are prone to acknowledge the greatness of God. Isn't it interesting how people are invested in your voice being silenced? 
People will spend all kind of money. Folk will invest all kind of diabolical schemes to keep you from opening your mouth. What is it about what God has placed in your mouth that other people don't want you to say? What is it about what God has done in your life that other folks are so invested in you being quiet? It is as if they are more aware of the power of God in your life than you are aware of it yourself. Lord, help me to become aware of what God has put in my mouth. Help me to become more aware of what God has done in my life that has the enemy so worried that they're trying to keep me silent. I love Sister Naomi, uh, the, the young 11-year-old who was at the, at, the, at, the, at the National March. This little old girl up there speaking like she'd been here before. Lord, have mercy. Amen. I, I, I was looking at her. I was saying, you know, you, you must be part of a little old small church where the kids get to practice. Amen. They Easter speeches. Somebody say amen. Get to practice. They Christmas speeches because you standing up in front of thousands of people and you not stuttering. You not worrying about what anybody got to think about it. You saying there's something in my mouth uh, that the newspapers don't want to talk about. That these politicians don't want to talk about. That these adults don't want to talk about that these police and and these teachers uh, and these preachers don't want to talk about it but she said that's all right I don't need you to talk for me because what God has put in my mouth uh, I can say it for myself uh, do I have anybody in here that can look back over what God has done for you Lord help me uh, you was in jail and everybody thought they had thrown away the key uh, but you come out of jail and now your, your voice is so powerful uh, that every time they look at you they're trying to silence your voice uh, but man of God my brother don't you let nobody keep your voice silenced if God brought you through it God wanted you to have a testimony that could break the yoke of the enemy if God brought you through it God wants you to speak in such a way that every other man who is defeated every other sister who is depressed Lord I feel like preaching every other young person who can't imagine a way out uh, God uh, wants you to use your voice uh, to help open up a door uh, so they can take a step out of the darkness uh, into uh, this marvelous light somebody shout yeah Oh, my loved one, uh, learn from the stones. Uh, sometimes your voice may be silenced, uh, but I dare you start listening to some stones around you uh, because what I hear the stones teaching uh, is that God will always have a witness. Uh, God will always have an echo. Uh, God will always have somebody uh, or something uh, that is right next to you. Uh, you don't know what to say. Uh, listen to the stones uh, if the stones start shouting hallelujah you ought to lift up your voice and shout if the stone starts hollering I'm gonna make it uh, you ought to lift up your voice and hop if the stones start hollering uh, God will take care of you uh, you ought to lift your voice and holler somebody shout hallelujah and this is the final thing uh, that if you and I uh, are going to be some people uh, who can recognize what God is doing, uh, don't you dare miss the moment. Uh, somebody holler, don't miss the moment. I love it how God will always give you a moment uh, for you to respond. Uh, God will always give you a window. Uh, Y'all excuse me, I don't know what's going on. Uh, maybe it's my anniversary got me all excited. Uh, God will give you a moment uh, that will always give you a window uh, to what God is doing. Uh, the question for you is will you miss the moment? Uh, don't you miss what God is doing? Uh, don't you 
you miss what God is saying? Don't you miss where God is leading? Don't you dare miss the moment. Don't you dare stay in your seats when God says it's time for you to get up. Don't you dare stay in that place when God says it's time for you to go. Don't you dare be depressed when God says I've given you joy, peace, power, say it. Don't you dare miss the moment. Listen. Because it are the moments. It is the moment. Jesus says, I'm weeping because you couldn't recognize what I was doing in the moment. And if you had recognized it, you would have learned what made for peace. You've been aware that salvation was closer to you than you could have ever imagined. Some of us are missing the moments, and in the missing of the moments, healing is passing us right on by. Hope is passing us right on by. What I love about God is that just like Sundays come around once a week, so does your healing. So does your hope. So does your deliverance. So you don't got to worry if you missed a moment the last time. What I'm challenging you to do is don't miss the moment the next time. Oh, yeah. Anybody determined not to miss the moment? Jesus is riding into Holy Week. Weeping for his city, weeping for his people. Because I think Jesus sees that many of them can't recognize that evil won't win. I talk to so many people and they think that evil is winning. But for evil to be winning, that means God must be losing. God can't lose, y'all. So if you and I are becoming so overwhelmed by the visible evil of the day, we have stopped training our eyes to see God at work and how God is unmasking the powers of this age. There's so many people that until recently thought that the devil was a figment of somebody's imagination. Now folk know the devil is real. Folk know this evil is real. Could it be that that is the miracle? God is exposing in our lives these things that must be defeated. So train your eyes. Touch your eyes, everybody. Touch your eyes. Touch your ears. Touch your mouth. Squeeze your fingers together. Train yourself. God, I want to train myself to feel your presence. I want to train my eyes to see you at work. I want to train my ears to hear your voice. I don't want to be deceived by the lies. I don't want to be overwhelmed by the conditions. God, I want to be someone. Hallelujah who can always recognize what you are doing. Come on, stand all over the place. As you're standing, say, I won't be intimidated. Say, I won't miss the moment. Say it again, I won't be intimidated. I won't miss the moment, but I will lean in. Somebody just lean forward on the teal tops of your toes. I'm leaning into what God is doing. I'm leaning into what God is saying. I'm leaning into where God is leading. So let it be. Grab the hand of the person next to you. Thank you.
you, Lord. And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? God, as I struggle through these seasons of my life, as I look around and see the prosperity of the wicked, God, I pray that together with my loved one who I'm touching, God, that you will strengthen my eyes, train my ears, form my lips to see, to speak, and to hear what you are doing. God, may we do it together as a community of believers. Trouble may be in my way, but God, I know that it is only temporary. Evil can't win because you are already victorious. And if God is on your side, who can stand against the people of God, the will of God, the power of God? Squeeze their hand real gently. I squeeze hope and power into these hands. I squeeze a fearlessness a faithfulness, a hope-filled power. If it's their family, God, may they see you at work. If it's their neighborhood, may they see you at work. If it's their own individual circumstances, may they see you at work. In Jesus' name, now lift your hands. It's me, O oh Lord, and I'm standing in the need of prayer. It is not my mother, it is not my father, it is not my sister, it is not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, and I need you. I need your power, God. I need your strength, God. I need you to remind me that the devil won't win. I need you to remind me, God, that the stones will give me a reminder, Lord, that I can't be silenced. Help me to find my voice. Somebody holler, help me find my voice, God. Say it again, help me find my voice, God. Lord God, help me, God, to be faithful to the point where I and we can experience the moments. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be here today, you're not saved. Do you want to be saved? you want to give your life to Jesus? Come on and meet us right here at this altar. Somebody will pray with you. You may be here today and you need to be touching and agreeing with someone because the devil feels like the devil is winning. And you just need to remind yourself the devil's not gonna win this one. Someone's trying to take your voice and silence you. Come on out of your seat and let's find your voice. Let's look for the stones. The gestures of what God is speaking or you're worried you're going to miss the moment God is saying I don't want you to miss the moment I want you to learn from the moment I want you to learn I want you to learn from this moment come on let's get some prayer then what can stand against and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Oh, and if our God is for us, who could ever stand? Come on, if you need prayer, come on and let's get some prayer. Let's touch it. What can stand against? If our God is with us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? 